this morning to watch the clouds slowly dissipate, the sun begin to shine, the day begin to rearrange itself into a different perspective than the way it started, and to redo, speak, God, because <laughs> in the middle of recording it, it got deleted. So it's fun. It's fun to do the redos and to not have to be performance oriented to present some huge mega production that you know we we don't do in the morning i mean how many people actually wake up in the morning and say oh well i got to get all dressed up so that i could read my devotionals and talk to god and you know be real with him because after all he saw me in the restroom and he saw me in the bathroom and he saw me in the bedroom and now i have to get all dressed up and act like i'm holy <laughs> when he knows you completely let's get real God sees you 24-7. <laughs> so, in sharing emotionals, we try to be as real as possible, always. And so, in take two on when you speak to, speak to my heart, oh God. When you feel you can't go on, do you ever want to turn tail and run when the going gets tough? Are you on the verge of surrendering hope or convictions because you are weary of waiting, of facing adversity, of enduring trials, or standing up for what is right, of resisting wrong, of walking in obedience to the commandments of God when others think you a fool? Why is it a struggle for any child of God to go on, to face life, to keep on keeping on, to walk in his commandments when disobedience, unbelief, or at least compromise seem more logical, more convenient, more expedient? Is it because we think we know better than God? Is it because we fear the face of man? Is it because we want to please or at least live in harmony with those around us? Is it because we fear the future, worry about the unknown, the unexpected? Is it because suddenly we think God isn't doing his job or isn't going to do it? Or that he doesn't care or that he's not able? When the children of Israel were on the verge of entering Canaan, to take possession of the land and to evict its godless inhabitants, Moses said to them, Be strong and of, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble at them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. He will not fail you nor forsake you. Deuteronomy 31.6 Just before Jesus left his disciples to take up Calvary's cross, he told them, These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Be strong, willing to endure. Be courageous, facing difficulty or danger with confidence. Confidence that God is sovereign and that he will never permit you to suffer more than you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you be able to bear us. Have confidence that God will bring his perfect will to pass confidence that we can trust and obey no matter how violent the storm is for he is with us take courage it is i do not be afraid matthew 14 27 yet you may be saying how can i be strong and courageous when i feel ordinary and unimportant weak and fearful disappointed and angry with god you know i think when i hear these things and I read them, really, in some ways, it boils down to having it out with God. Really, I mean, haven't you ever been mad at God enough to have it out with Him, to go to Dukes and decide to duke it out, <laughs> to get mad, to get real with God at some point in time, and to scream and shout and stomp rant and rave i mean haven't you ever done that with your loved ones have you ever been mad at your children have you ever got angry at your wife have you ever spoken harshly at your parents even oh god forbid they would have smacked me <laughs> but really haven't you ever gotten mad when i got saved as a young man very young, 17, or was it 18? Ah, it might have been 17. I didn't understand a lot of things that was going on in my life because I had read scripture and they seemed to indicate something different than what I saw in my life. 
So there were times when I would go all alone into a deserted parking lot, which in Southern California at that time was pretty easy to find. And by myself, if you could picture this, in the middle of the night, underneath the street lamp, I would start yelling at God. Now, I probably could have got locked up if somebody would have seen me, but I would have it out. I would tell God exactly what I was mad about, exactly what he said, exactly how I felt about it, exactly where I thought he was wrong, or why I thought that something wasn't working according to what he had promised or said or did or how he used to apply. And I would literally just be ticked. <laughs> that, I think, is what God wants from us. Truth. He wants us to be real with him as he will be real with us. He withholds his anger, but he knows where we're coming from when we're sincere about what we don't understand. So, if you get depressed, or you get anxious, or you get worried, or you get mad, be real. I'm serious. Get downright factual with God and deal with him as an individual, as a human being, because he came as the Son of Man. He knows exactly what you're feeling, and he expresses it in himself by saying, I have been where you are. So, deal with the mind. Get to the point where you recognize that not only is he God, and you may feel like he's distant, but he's the Son of Man, and he knows your feelings. So then you can relate to him on a one-to-one -one basis. Because as soon as you start to get that real with God, sharing that, Hey, you're pissed, you're ticked, you're mad, or you're depressed, or, you know, you're just, don't feel like it. Then God can help you, and he may change you without you knowing it, inside, to redo your emotions in a way that is constructive to a relationship with him. And as you take it to him first, <laughs> you'll find that everybody else is a piece of cake. <laughs> They're easy to deal with. God is the one who just looks at you and puts up with you and lets you vent. And then finally, when you fall down on your knees in a parking lot like I did and just kind of exhausted, God will speak to you. Because it won't be the storm of your anger or the tempest of your tantrum that he speaks to you in. Because he won't stop you from venting. He'll let you go just as mad as you want to be, even like he did Jonah. But when you finally settle down and when you finally calm down, and when you finally let it all out, because he already knows it's in you, then God will speak to you personally. And you know what? You just might agree that he's right in the end. <laughs> it's a lot more fun to be real with God than it is to make up a religion about him. Because he is living, and he is alive. And Jesus wants you to know him that personally, so that you are intimate even as Jesus was intimate with the Father. That's what your goal is, and that's what you need to do. Be real with God.